Hi everyone, welcome to a new session on the Apply Tool step-by-step -step guide. Today, I will show you how the root cause analysis tool, part of the Apply Tools dashboard, works and how useful it is in helping you find the root cause of visual differences in your source code. To do so, I will apply UI testing for a Vue.js application using Apply Tools Eyes SDK for Storybook. I've chosen the Bootstrap Vue.js library to use in this demo. I will add Storybook onto this library, run the Apply Tools Eyes SDK, get our UI test runs generated, and then verify the results on the Apply Tools dashboard. Let's start. Before we start our demo, let me show you how Apply Tools does UI testing for applications that are using Storybook. First of all, you start by writing the Storybook stories. Then, you install and run the Eyes SDK for Storybook. The SDK extracts the Storybook stories, uses Puppeteer to render the components. Then the client-side API of the Eyes SDK generates DOM snapshots for all the components and uploads them to the Apply Tools backend servers. There, the Apply Tools Visual Grid component kicks in and generates screenshots from the DOM snapshots. The snapshots are then compared to any baseline snapshots and the visual differences are reported on the Apply Tools dashboard. I will start by cloning the Bootstrap Vue.js library repository on my machine. The project itself is hosted on GitHub. Let's copy the Git repository URL from here and then open an editor. In my case, it's Visual Studio Code. Make sure you have a terminal window open. Then issue the following command, git clone, and then paste in the git repository URL. Let's give it a shot and clone the repository locally. In a few seconds, you will have all the repository files stored on the machine. This is the library folder on my machine. If we navigate to the source, then components folder, we can find the list of all components supported by this library. So, first things first, I'm gonna install all the dependencies required by this library by issuing the following command, yarn, and hit enter. This will take a few seconds to get all the dependencies installed locally on my machine. I will add the storybook npm package by using the following command yarn add add storybook forward slash view hyphen d to install this package as a dev dependency. Next I'm gonna install a few peer dependencies that are required by storybook to function properly. I will issue the following command. In addition, I'm going to install a few CSS related npm packages that are required by Storybook to properly render the components together with their styles. So the command is the following. Now let's navigate to the package.json file and add an npm script to make it easy for us to run storybook from the command line. So here I'm gonna, ins I'm gonna paste the following command storybook. Let's save the file. Now that all the dependencies are installed, let's add some storybook configuration files that are required by storybook in order to run. To do so, let's go to the root folder and create a new folder called storybook. Inside this folder, I'm gonna add the config.js file, which is the main file used by storybook to start running our stories. And I'm gonna paste the following code. We are simply looping or gathering all the stories we have in the project, which we're gonna add later on in the demo. And then we start like executing each and every story. Also, I need to add a SAS file to load all the styles required by the components so that they render properly inside storybook stories. To do so, I'm going to add the following file. 
and paste in the following. Then I will import the SAS file into the config.js file. So we can place it here. Let's save. This way, when the stories are running, all the, all the styles we have inside the scss-loader file will be loaded for us. Now that Storybook is properly configured in our solution, let's move on and start adding our first Storybook story. First of all, we need to create the Stories folder at the root of the project. And then inside this folder, we can start adding our stories. In my case, I'm going to add the navbar stories.js file. Then I'm going to paste the following storybook story. So basically, we are defining a new story called full navbar. And the template for this story is a simple bootstrap navbar. I've copied this markup from the bootstrap Vue.js website. You can go and check it over there. As you can see, we have uh, the markup is using a set of Vue.js components like the bcollabs, the bnavbar nav, and other, other components here. So in order for Storybook to render this story, it needs uh, to know and define somewhere all these components that are being used inside this story. In order to tell Storybook about our components, we have two options to do so. The first is to define the components in line to this story by adding the components property and then inside we can list all our components. This is one option. And the option I'm going to use in this demo is to go to the storybook, to the config.js file inside the storybook folder and paste in the following. I'm simply importing the view object and then importing a few components that are needed by our story and then define the components globally inside the view object. So this way the components will be available by all stories, uh, by all storybook stories. So you can choose between these two options, either to define your components globally or define them inside the stories themselves. And before we proceed, I would like to do a small and minor change, which is replace the hyphen here in the file name by a dot. Because if you go to the config.js file, you notice that we are loading all the files that end with .stories.js. Now that our first storybook story is ready, let's give it a shot and run storybook. To do so, I will issue the following command, yarn storybook and hit enter. This command would fire up the storybook playground, which will open inside a browser instance. So as you can see, we have a single story, which is the full navbar story, and it's being rendered here inside the storybook uh, playground. Now that we have Storybook up and running in our application, let's move on and talk about AppliTools Eyes SDK for Storybook. The SDK itself is hosted on GitHub. You can visit their GitHub page, browse their source code, and read their amazing documentation on the SDK. It shows you how to do the installation, how to set up the AppliTools API key, how to use the SDK and all the different configurations, uh, related to this uh, SDK. So let's move on to Visual Studio Code and use the following command to install AppliTools Eyes SDK for Storybook. Your add add AppliTools forward slash eyes dash storybook hyphen D to install it as a dev dependency. The Eyes SDK for Storybook is installed. However, there is still one step required before you can start running AppliTools uh, Eyes SDK, which is making sure you have the environment variable 
Apply Tools API key. This environment variable is used by the SDK uh, to authorize the request whenever you run your storybook stories locally. In order to make sure you have the environment variable set on your machine, let's go to the Apply Tools uh, dashboard, locate the Accounts menu, and then you click on My API key to copy your API key. Then you go back to the editor, and then you can type the following, export Apply Tools underscore API underscore key, equals and then you paste in the API key you got from the uh, Appy Tools dashboard. If you are on a Windows machine, so this is basically if you're running on a MacBook machine. However, if you are on a Windows machine, all you have to do is replace export by set Appy Tools API key and then you paste in the API key you copied from Appy Tools dashboard. Let's go back and run the eyes SDK for Storybook. You type the following command npx eyes dash storybook and hit enter so the process starts by uh, gathering all the stories in the project running them and then generating a DOM snapshot out of each story and those DOM snapshots are being sent to the Appy Tools backend server and there they are being converted by the Appy Tools visual grid component into actual screenshots and these screenshots are then handed off to an AI engine that will do all the comparisons with any baseline screenshots uh, already present on the server and it will uh, render and display all the visual changes and results on the Apply Tools dashboard. So basically this is our first run and as you can see no differences were found so everything went fine for this run. If you go back to the Apply Tools dashboard and hit refresh here you can see this is our test batch it has a status of past because this is our first test we're having today. Let's expand more on this, uh, on the test runs inside this uh, batch. We can expand on this uh, single test run. And as you can see, this is the uh, navbar story test run. So a story was rendered into a screenshot and it is displayed here inside the Apply Tools dashboard. Now I will introduce a visual change in our story so that we can use the root cause analysis tool to tell us exactly where the source of the visual change is coming from. I will go to the SAS loader file we have in, inside the storybook folder and make all the hyperlinks display with a background color of yellow. Let's run the eyes SDK once again. The same process goes on again. Uh, the stories are loaded by Eyes SDK. The uh, DOM snapshots are taken, they are sent back to the server. On the server, they are being converted into actual screenshots using the Apply Tools Visual Grid component. After that, uh, they are handed in to, the, uh, to an AI engine that does the comparison uh, with the, uh, between the current snapshots and the existing baseline uh, snapshots. So as you can see, we have a total of one difference was found, which means that our story or test run has failed. So let's go to the uh, Apply Tools dashboard once again and see the results. By the way, something I forgot to mention previously. In the first run, Apply Tools would take this snapshot and store it as a baseline snapshot, which means that the next time we run uh, the same test, it will compare the current test run to the baseline one. And we can see this in, in the second test batch we have here. So first of all, you notice that it has a status of unresolved, which means that there has been some changes, and, uh, and these changes require a human interaction to decide whether to accept them or to reject them. So if we expand more on the test run, and then click on this snapshot, we can see that uh, we have a few sections on the snapshots on the snapshot that are being highlighted for us, which means that this is where we have the visual differences. Let's go to this menu here and click on Show Both. This way, on the right side, you're going to see the current test run. On the left side, you're going to see the baseline snapshot. 
Okay, let's open the RCA tool, which is the root cause analysis tool. And then let's locate the areas where we want to use the tool to analyze. So I will click this arrow here. I will select this link and this link, which is the language link. As you can see, the root cause analysis displays for us the differences in the CSS rules in this case. So basically, it says that we have a new background color property set to yellow on these links, on the new test run here, on the right side. So this way, the RCA tool was able to discover that there has been a CSS change in the rules that cause this visual difference. And uh, root cause analysis tool is also capable of detecting DOM changes and attribute changes. Let's see how this works. Now I will introduce a visual change in our story so that we can use the root cause analysis tool to tell us exactly where the source of the visual change is coming from. Let's go back to our editor and then we go to the stories folder locate the navbar stories. In this second scenario, I'm going to introduce an attribute change that RCA will be able to detect. So in this case, I'm going to change the size of the uh, search box from SM to large, from small to large. Let's run again the eyes SDK. Once again, we notice that our test run failed because there is a visual change between the baseline snapshot and the current snapshot generated from this test run. Let's go back to the dashboard and hit refresh. So this is the second test run, the third test run. We can expand and uh, click on the snapshot generated. Okay, so now you can see that we have even the search box being highlighted, which means that not only the hyperlinks have a, a change, which is having a new background of color yellow, but also the search box has a change. And you can notice that the size of the search box have changed from the, from the baseline to this current test run. Again, let's, hit, let's click on the root cause analysis and then select the two search boxes and the two snapshots. So basically, you notice that in the attribute sections under the root cause analysis, it has detected that the attribute has changed from small to large. And also there have been a change in the uh, CSS rules because a, a class of uh, form control SM has different CSS selectors than a class of form control LG, which is also detected in this case. And finally, let's introduce a DOM change in our story so that RCA tool can detect this change and report the results on the Appy Tools dashboard. So for that, I'm going to wrap the search text here with a paragraph tag. I will save and run again the eyes SDK for storybook. So once again, the current test run fails, which is also explained. Let's go back to the Apple Tools dashboard, hit refresh. We can see a new test run. If we expand and click on the snapshot, we can see that we have a new highlighted section on the, on the snapshots that shows that there is a difference between the baseline and the current test run. So let's open the RCA tool and select both areas. And then you can see that RCA tool was able to detect a DOM change and it says that a new tag name has been added and also a new uh, CSS rule has been applied which is for the P tag in this case. AppliTools RCA is both powerful and convenient. It can pinpoint the exact DOM CSS change for you. Then all you have to do is locate the code base and do whatever is required to pass your tests. That's it for today, hope you enjoyed the demo.